So if I'm moving the stone downwards or upwards, that's pretty much it. The landscape is following the object. And if I generate it once, it will create the trench once. Oh my god, this is sound like sandworms situation. Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and let's talk about landscaping with procedural content generation. And by landscaping, I mean replacing the ability of pushing the landscape higher or lower, like sculpting the landscape using procedural methods like this spline right here. But this is the example of a so-called landscape splines approach where you add a new spline in the actual landscape. It's only available inside of the landscape when you're editing it and it's only available available for it and it's sort of the way to not destructively shape the landscape like this and you can control the width and you can push this path upwards or downwards so it will dig inside of the landscape and all of this is great and people have been using this for a while but the problem with this approach is that this spline as far as I know I researched it for more than five minutes and I haven't found a way to get the data data of uh, this spline's influence on the landscape outside of the landscape so I could use it with procedural content generation or to use like actually address this spline. This object of the spline you can't put a tag on it so there's no like that way of addressing the object is not available as well. I feel like everything sort of needs to stay as modular and as mobile as possible so it could be like a set of objects thrown around the landscape that I could just select all of them and then move to a different place and all the landscape shaping and all the object spawning, everything would move to a different place if I would need to. That's kind of the way I feel like sticking to it right now. But one thing I was always really missing with procedural content generation is the ability to like when I'm drawing a path, that would be, you know, removing the trees right here and this is like the path. I would love this spline that's defining this path to also like create a shape on the ground. So it would be like a little bit of a trench or a bump. So it would look more special and like actually shaped as a landscape. And one way to do it is to throw around different kinds of assets from the Megascans library. But if you do want to create a hole, no matter how many assets you throw around, you still won't be able to lower the landscape below where it already is, you know, it can only go higher than the landscape. How do you make a hole that goes downwards, you know? You really need to be able to procedurally shape the landscape itself. So, I actually found a way of doing it, and it involves yet another experimental plugin to use together with already experimental plugin of procedural content generation, and it's called Landscape Patches. Let me go ahead and show you guys right here in the plugins. I literally stumbled upon it myself. I never saw any tutorial on it like this thing right here. You turn this on, you reload your editor, and right here I will do one thing like this. I think it's doing it right now. Hold on. Yeah, so there it is. Right now I've built this kind of trench. The land goes a little bit concave where the path lies. And all of this is done by these actors that are thrown around. First of all, there are blueprint actors that I created myself. They have this component that's called landscape circle height patch. So the way it works is pretty much any object you spawn, especially if it's like a separate object. So let me real quick show you guys what I mean. If I would throw in like a nice round boulder. So right now it's just a, a static mesh, right? Nothing crazy about it. So right here, since it's an actor, I can add like a component to it. And if I type in patch right here, we see circle height patch and texture patch. So that's an Another kind, I haven't yet figured out how to use it, maybe it's not fully functional yet, but here we are, we add this thing, so let's make the radius of one meter and the fall off another one meter, like a two meter radius of influence. So if I'm moving the stone downwards or upwards, that's pretty much it. The landscape is uh, following the object just like that. 
and you can uh, you know tailor it a little bit by moving the component just right it's always a circle but you can uh, you know add several components of these circles to make a bit of a more complex shape or something like that so this is the basic idea of how this thing works all of this is fun but what's really cool is that you can throw these patches without the stones without anything using pcg but for that you still need to create a separate actor what i did was i created a blueprint that's called a bp landscape patch and it's a very simple blueprint it doesn't have anything in it except for one landscape circle height patch component so this is the way i did it and here you define your radius like 10 centimeters and fall off of one meter like pretty much a one meter soft concave not concave just a, a flat thing right so it depends on the elevation whether it will be concave or convex it doesn't matter in this case and what's also really cool is that it also reacts to scaling so if you just scale the actor this blueprint actor and scale this component that radius is changing as well and combining this radius with the elevation you have all the control you need so that's pretty crazy but one important thing to keep in mind here is that this should be a special separate PCG actor that is doing that. My main forest PCG is right here. And until now, all of the forest was generated using this one PCG actor that has all this crazy stuff going on in here, defining all the stones and forest floor and bushes and trees and everything. So all of it was defined with just one giant node tree with subgraphs and everything. But you can't also include uh, the landscaping, like the shaping of the landscape inside of this, because many of these things right here, they rely on the shape of the landscape. And if you sample the landscape, then throw things that change the shape of the landscape, and then it will be sampling again and changing again. It will be re-triggering itself over and over again. Again. it will be a forever cycle which looks really funny because the moment you generate things they keep regenerating and the path starts growing up or sinking downwards forever <laughs> which is hilarious so yeah that doesn't really work and the way you do it you create a separate graph so and you create a separate pcg actor and use that graph in here so i called it pcg path landscaping and this is all it does so i only sample the spline of the path so this spline right here and all of the splines that have the path tag on them i project them on the landscape so after we project all of the points so let me show you uh so these are the points that i generated right so they are one meter length then i go ahead and project them on the ground like that then i um transform the points so they lay on the ground flat so there will be literally if i wouldn't be adding anything else like uh, no transformation and just project them on the ground and then spawn these landscape patch actors they wouldn't do anything because they're literally on the level of the landscape that that's when the landscape patch not doing any influence on the ground but then after that i do transform points and i lower them below the ground for 30 centimeters and that's how you make that landscape patch create a dent so right now here it is the points go lower and that's where we then spawn exactly these actors of the patches and they do their thing and as i said like right now i can probably demonstrate it the only difference of why this is working fine and right now i actually generated it again and it probably sunk lower yeah it looks wrong that's because it should only be generated sort of once and by that i mean you need to clean up so this is what the landscape looks like without the influence of uh, path landscaping and if i generate it once it will create the trench once and the point of it is that since this is a separate actor like this we can go ahead and tell it to not regenerate pcg volume in editor 
and only generate like the generation trigger should be on demand. So that means even this button force regen won't do anything. All of it needs to be addressed specifically through like talking to the actor and telling it like generate. And this is what happens if it generates again, and then it generates again, it goes even lower, and so on. If it would be auto-triggering itself every time landscape is changing, it would be doing this again and again. So like with default settings of like this, I would be able to go ahead and force regen, and it would actually work, I assume. And here it goes. I'm not doing anything and it keeps regenerating because it keeps being triggered by the changes of the landscape that are doing it again and again. So all I can do here is just hit clean up and make sure it uh, doesn't regenerate. So anyway, this is the point, and pretty much all of this means now that, like, I have two of these actors of PCG running in the level, but I don't have to do anything twice. All I need to do, like, I'm working with just one path spline, which is uh, the main purpose of all of this. So if I'll go into PCG folder here, and I have this um, path spline, right? So this is my little actor that has a little spline going on, that just has a tag on it that says PCG path. That's pretty much all it does. And so as I build this uh, path right here, and I alt and click, and I'll make a little dead end path like this right here, I'll then go ahead and regenerate the forest, and it will remove all the trees and bushes, so John could walk along this path. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and click on the PCG landscaping, and I'll clean up and generate. Okay, I seem to have a problem. For some reason, my new path, which is the same type of actor that definitely generates points, it just won't generate the actual actors. Clean up and generate. In here, we see these points, and in here, under the ground, they're also here, but the actual actors of the landscape patches, they don't get generated. I noticed when I was playing around with uh, Unreal Engine 5.3, a lot of the times it would use this union thing out of nowhere, like it would add in between my old nodes, it would add this union. So it's like you need to unionize all the points, so they would be all really fed into the spawner. And there we go. Okay, debugging done. <laughs> So, in order to make sure all the splines really work, we don't need to do any of this, just add a little union node right before spawning our patch actors. And in here we choose that BP landscape patch blueprint that I showed you guys earlier, so that just has this one landscape patch in it, and that's what we're spawning, I think it's pretty clear at this point, right? <laughs> So yeah, this is it. A thing about paths, they don't necessarily have to go underground. Maybe they would go higher. Or actually, you can make it like minus 30 to plus 30, and it will create like a randomized, uh, very messy kind of path that goes up and down, like creating like this bumpy thing, if you want to. Anyway, the possibilities are, as usual, endless the way it goes with PCG. So yeah, here's the path that's like sticking out of the ground a bit, and let's uh, bring back the actual forest, and let's regenerate our trees around all of the new paths. So yeah, the bump is here, uh, let's make it stronger to make sure we can see it. The weirdest paths ever. Whoa. That's some phallic stuff. <laughs> oh my god, this is some, like, sandworm situation. And yeah, one thing, as I'm looking at it right now, one thing to improve this in the future is to see if there's a way to, like, create a gradient so this bump would fade in at the beginning and at the end of the path. Because so far, I don't really know a way to do it. There's no way to, like, 
like all these curves, they only work for interior type of sampling of the spline. So if it would be on interior of the loop, and in this case, if it's along the spline, you don't really get to have this kind of density gradients or anything. So it's looking a bit aggressive here. But yeah, overall, this is it. This is how you work with it. Pretty much the way you can work with it is that you can make your main forest PCG actor totally live and regenerate uh, in the editor and everything, not just on demand, but make sure it's paused in here, pause regen on the actual graph of this main PCG. This way it will only regenerate when the landscape is changing. So the way you do it, you would move the splines around and you would be able to do it as slowly and carefully as you want and nothing would be lagging and regenerating all the time very heavily. And then all you have to do is go into the this uh, landscaping PCG actor and clean it up and regenerate. And that that, if you would have, uh, I think, generate on load maybe, uh, that would make the forest itself react to the new bumps of the landscape and regenerate together with the path as it does now, I assume. This forest is getting out of hand. <laughs> Very heavy stuff. There it is. So yeah, this is it. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. A quite a fun experiment uh, and solving one issue I had that I wasn't able to figure out how to actually generate landscaping along the spline because like for the meadow spline this actor already uses this one giant landscape patch to move the whole thing upwards but yeah that is just one patch that is inside of the actor that contains the spline that controls the PCG so it's not involved in generation and these are the generated actors with the uh, landscape patches so we generate new controlled uh, bumps on the landscape that form uh, like a line or a path so that's pretty cool hope you guys find this useful and thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye all right so how does this work oh my god yeah, I need to adjust some stuff to work with these very intense landscaping works. Jesus. I feel harassed walking on this thing. <laughs>